Welcome to the IMAF Technical Seminar and welcome to all the national federations and members around the world. We hope you're sitting comfortably and we will take you through on how to use Livestorm. On the right hand of your screen, you will see a sidebar with a chat tab that is public, meaning everyone can post in the chat and messages will be visible to everyone. If you want to mention someone in the chat, you can just type at and the name of the participant. You can also send Dropbox and Drive links by clicking on the icons at the bottom. There is also a question tab where only the attendees can ask questions. If it is public, you can give it a like by pressing on this button. A poll tab where you as attendees can answer the polls that we create and a people tab which allows you to see the other attendees. Each webinar session is around an hour and you are also able to download any file that is being presented by the guest speaker today. At the end of the seminar, you are able to download the entire seminar for yourself. We are looking forward to educating you along the journey. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Michelle. Hello and welcome to this seminar on doping risks and anti-doping solutions. My name is Michelle Varokan. I am IMAF's anti-doping consultant, um, a role that I've held for uh, several years and my involvement in anti-doping goes back decades. So um, my role today is to help those of you who are joining uh, from national federations who may be um, working to take on the responsibility for uh, the administration of the anti-doping program uh, as a national federation, but also to reach out to those of you who are athletes, coaches, administrators, to show you just a short insight into some of the risks and some of the solutions that you can instantly put in place uh, to help yourself, your athletes, and everyone in your federation. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is the, the, the real problem we have of ignorance in anti-doping against being educated about not just the issues, but also how to actually deal with the issues. You need to understand what risks are um, in all the anti-doping rules and look at the solutions available. We firmly believe in IMAF that cheating has no place in the sport uh, and that you should understand our values, respect your health, your abilities, your choices. And coaches, please, Make sure you're engaging with your athletes, parents, engage with your children to make sure that health first, judge your own ability and, and make sure you're making very wise choices. This is all about the respect we have for the sport, for your support team and also for your opponents. So anti-doping has rules and that's something you really do need to be aware of from the start we have a world anti-doping code that imaf has subscribed to and is seeking signatory status of the world anti-doping code to do this imaf has created its own rules and the member federations must also create their rules Part of membership means you must abide by the rules. The international level, that's where the IMAF rules apply. At the national level, what we've asked national federations to look for is what specific national policies may very well apply. Because in some countries there is national legislation and this obviously will take a priority but that legislation must be in line with the World Anti-Doping Code. That's all part of the international agreements that we have. So do be aware, in certain countries, an anti-doping rule violation may actually result in a sanction that includes imprisonment. 
So do understand what happens at the national level. And we look to the national federations to help share this information. Let's not be ignorant about the, the possibilities of the consequences. And certainly we've made sure that education is our priority because by educating, you'll understand what your responsibilities are and also what the liabilities are. You may be aware that IMAF has already created an Athlete Anti-Doping Act and we'd ask you to make sure that you familiarize yourself with that. The first part being the um, responsibilities and rights according to the code. The second part being that which IMAF is developing with its Athletes Commission and with all its uh, members to try and make sure we've got some IMAF specific uh, rules that we're going to abide by. So the first anti-doping risk really is, is the ignorance of not knowing that the anti-doping rules are really based on prohibited activities and those prohibited activities lead to anti-doping rule violations. That's code speak. The most important rule, of course, sits around the prohibited list. The use of certain substances and methods is prohibited. So the one thing we need to make sure we're doing is publicizing the list. Now, when I move on to the next um, uh, 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 slide, uh, you really do have to understand the severity of this rule because it is what we call a strict liability rule. Just because you did not know does not mean to say you will not be charged. So be aware, know the risk and know the solution is to understand how all of this applies. Yes, of course, someone else may be may have a responsibility, such as a coach or a doctor, um, someone, a parent, maybe a friend who, who just said, well, I use this medication, I use this supplement, this is fine. But the, the, the liability sits with the athlete who has the positive test. The prohibited list is reviewed and republished every year. So if you're building an education program, build in an annual refresher around the prohibited list. The list is available in October and then it comes into force in January. So there's a three month period where doctors, coaches, parents, athletes review all medications in order that you can prepare to be compliant with the list by January. So check in October any changes to educate and inform others. It should be a topic of conversation. It's one that we will put in the IMAF calendar to make sure that we are driving that awareness campaign about the prohibited list. The list is available in several languages from the World Anti-Doping Agency, and also it will link in with the education platform of the World Anti-Doping Agency called ADEL, the Anti-Doping E-Learning Platform, where you will be able to follow some education about the prohibited list that goes on beyond what I'm talking about today. But a little bit of a warning, this list is not a complete list of substances. It is a pharmacological list of, of categories. And it's really, really important that what you're actually doing is making sure that you check substances really to be permitted. And I'm going to come on to that. So let me first of all talk to you about the list itself. Because within the list, there are two groups of substances, some that are banned all the time and some that are only banned in competition. Now, let me give you an interesting example. If you look at these uh, classes, pharmacological classes of substances, 
you'll see on the right hand side that we have cannabinoids banned in competition. Of course, you wouldn't expect to be in a, a competition fighting an opponent under the influence of substances that could be dangerous both to them and to you. Now, under the cannabinoids category is a substance called CBD, cannabidiol. And WADA has said, look, we're going to permit this. But please take the warning that it is very, very unusual for CBD oil products not to contain some of the active banned ingredients in cannabinoids. Very, very unusual, no matter what the manufacturers say. And be aware that in some countries, CBD oil is prohibited under drug laws. So those athletes going to Japan will not be taking their CBD oil with them because Japan has legislation that bans CBD oil. So you need to be aware of the rules. I'd also ask you to look very carefully at the, the in competition list, a, a longer term there, glucocorticoids. We find glucocorticoids in many medications and you'll need to understand what's in your medication. And an even further sort of complication is that glucocorticoids are banned by what they call certain routes of administration. And presently, it means you can inhale glucocorticoids, as you might do if you used an asthma medication based on a glucocorticoid. You can use a skin cream containing a glucocorticoid, but you may not have an intramuscular injection for glucocorticoids without getting approval to use. So the prohibited list to me is not the best place for you to check your medications. Some of those uh, substances are banned at all times. So if you do have a medication, that you that contains one of these substances you are going to need to get approval to use i'll come on to that in a moment so we have prohibited versus permitted and the prohibited list you must be aware of it you must be aware if it impacts on the medications that you might want to take uh, because you have a justified medical condition so to me i would be advising all the time check medications are the ingredients permitted? Avoid risky behaviors such as accepting medications from your family. Just because your grandmother uses it does not mean to say it is okay to use under sports anti-doping rules. A teammate may have used something and they may never have tested positive. But if you use it, you are strictly liable. Check these yourselves. This is what we take into account in the anti-doping hearing. When you are purchasing medications, just remind the doctor, the pharmacist, that you're bound by anti-doping rules and you must avoid prohibited substances. But check for yourself. They may not be up to date on the rules. They may be using a previous list. They may not understand the anti-doping rules. So check for yourself. And if you do need to use a medication containing a prohibited substance, then you need to look at the therapeutic use exemption system. I'm not going to go into that uh, today, but I'm just going to remind you that that exists and then coaches, uh, any medical support around your team, uh, national federations can be looking for the therapeutic use exemption system. And what we're advising national federations to do is to look to their national anti-doping organization for guidance on the national TUE system and use that. Get your TUE, approved at national level and IMAF will approve all national anti-doping organization TUE certificates. 
So my anti-doping solution to you is to check your medications, check all the ingredients, and in particular, check the country of purchase because some medications have different formulations in different countries. So it may have almost the same name. And yet in the United States, it's different than it is in Europe. In Asia, it's different than it is in Australia. So please check the ingredients, the active ingredients. Check if it's got a permitted status. In some countries, they've been really, really helpful. Those of you who are in France will be able to look at the, the medication itself and see an icon on it that says whether it's approved for sport or not. And I believe there are some other countries that are now adopting that uh, approach and it's really, really helpful. And use websites to check those medications. And I'm gonna give you a list in a moment. Keep a copy of the answer because if the website gets it wrong, that is your evidence that you followed all the right procedures. Use national resources to check for the national uh, medications. And we're fortunate that there are so many countries who actually have uh, anti-doping uh, websites where you can check the medication. So these drug information databases are available to you. Probably the major one is Global DRO, and that is also available. I think believe it's available also in Japan. I haven't listed Japan on this list. Um, I must amend that, sorry. Um, but when you go on to Global DRO, it will give you a whole range of countries whose medications they are uploading. For the most part, they will not cover supplements. You will find in some countries the National Anti-Doping Organization also has a support line information site for supplements. And that's true of New Zealand and the Netherlands. And please let me know if there are other countries where you've seen support lines. There is a very, very good website. When I come to do this, the, the webinar on supplements, there's a very good web, uh, website in the United States. It's called Supplements 411, and you can actually find supplements that are known to contain banned substances. And that is actually in our uh, anti-doping handbook that it will be available on the IMAF website. So use these websites but keep a copy of the answer. And when you come to October, then go back to those websites and check that they have uploaded the information according to the next year's list. And it may take them some time, but make sure you're getting an answer that's relevant for the year in which you're going to be competing and make sure you check your medications, especially if you bought them in one year and you're still using them the following year. I've mentioned supplements already, but the supplements for us in anti-doping are a risk. They are unregulated. They may contain prohibited substances. It may not be written on the label. Uh, it may be what we call a proprietary blend. So they've hidden a prohibited substance under some kind of, uh, of mixture they've made for themselves and registered as their unique mix. And you won't know, you'll consume it and you are strictly liable. Supplements will never compensate for an inadequate diet. And uh, if you were on the session earlier on this week, or if you haven't, please go and get the uh, session um, uh, we did on Monday on weight management, because uh, UFC are about to issue a, an up-to-date um, booklet that you, is available from their nutrition uh, center. And I think that would really help athletes out there to use diet sensibly rather than supplements as a way of uh 
preparing for uh, competition and training. Make sure you're getting adequate sleep, rest, hydration, and you will not need all those supplements, all those uh, added uh, extras to help your performance. And do remember that some supplements may end up being illegal to possess in certain countries because of the substances that they contain. So there are very strict laws in some countries and that would also apply to supplements. So make sure as a national federation, you're encouraging links to the right kind of advisory services available nationally through national sports medicine uh, institutes or um, universities where they are working within the anti-doping rules to guide on diet and on the wise use of all the sort of performance support programs uh, that actually adhere to the anti-doping rules. And in that way, you're going to help protect everybody. A very important topic is uh, weight management, but the way that you might try to rehydrate uh, is also something you need to be aware of is covered within the anti-doping rules in a different way. IV infusion is prohibited in weight category sports. Yes, we can use it as an emergency treatment and there are guidelines about the course, uh, the treatment in terms of hospital treatment, surgical procedures, or clinical diagnostic investigations. That's the only justification, and that must be recorded, and it must be reported under the TUE system. But you may not use IV infusions to, to rapidly rehydrate after you've uh, done a rapid weight loss. So be aware of that. That in itself will have you charged with an anti-doping rule violation. The solution, I think, is to provide information. It's absolutely vital that we make sure we get the information out there about where to find this, inf this uh, um, information, where it, it's... Uh, uh, going to be found in an updated format. So a simple internet search, you must make sure you're working on the prohibited list that applies at that time. Make sure you're aware of the annual updates. Any medications, be they over-the-counter medications or prescribed medications, you must check them. So the one thing I'd really like you to do any athletes who are listening to this is to go and get out all the medications in the cupboard and make sure you've checked what the ingredients are and know, put a nice big red cross on those that actually contain prohibited substances and know that you should not take them and avoid any risky behavior such as sharing a water bottle with someone who is using a prohibited medication, even if they have a, a therapeutic use exemption, because minute traces can be identified. Let's make sure we're educating about good preparation for training and competition within these rules, making sure we're avoiding all the risky behaviours, because that is the way that we avoid the ignorance and really what I see a lot of, which is I didn't know it was prohibited. So that we're going to focus on making sure that deliberate cheaters are, they're going to be suspended and taken out of our sport when we actually find them. So if you are someone who's taken on the role of the anti-doping officer for your national federation, please help with creating that plan to educate. If you set out a plan of who, what, when, where, how, and why over a period of, of a, a year, then you can actually start your 
partnership with your national anti-doping organization to help you. You do not have to do it. There will be national trainers, national resources. There's a whole website called Adele, the anti-doping e-learning platform, which I've spoken about on numerous occasions. And we have some information on the IMAF website about, and you really can help yourself. Make the records of all the education that you do and make sure you share that with IMAF. And if you're an athlete listening to this, remember that we will ask you in a hearing for evidence that you have actually take, undertaken your responsibilities as an athlete and checked, looked at the uh, resources and that you are making sure you're familiar with the rules. The violations can be severe. So know about the prohibited list, know and check your permitted medications, make sure you are very, very sensible about your diet and avoid where possible the use of supplementation. And that includes energy drinks. Think about preparing for travel, think about your sleep, your sensible weight management, and that in itself is going to make everything entirely possible for you to be a credible MMA athlete. So thank you for listening. And I'm now happy to take questions. I've given a long time for questions. And uh, hopefully we have some available in the chat. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for that, Michelle. Um... We've got one question I'm going to bring up for you. Um, it's from Mark. Um, how can uh, you be held accountable for using a substance if it is not indicated by a supplier on the product? Um, it's just the rules. The rules make you strictly liable. So by all means, if that's the situation that arises, then you bring the product and you can show us, but we would still need to see in a hearing that you've undertaken all um, efforts to check that product. Now, licensed medicines are guaranteed by legislation. Supplements fall into a different category. They are unregulated. The industry tries to bring along its own regulation, but industry regulation does not work quite in the same way as the anti-doping laboratories who are looking for minuscule quantities. And it may be that they manufacture um, a prohibited um, supplement um, and they are not marketing that to, uh, to you, but the manufacturing process has, has, has created some contamination. If that happened to... Um, and it has, we've seen that in, in the anti-doping world, we've seen um, a licensed medicine actually be contaminated. And, and the pharmaceutical company is prosecuted for that. And of course, then the athlete is not held accountable. But when it comes to a supplement, we've warned you about the risks. Supplements can be avoided if you use a, a sensible diet. And so we're really have to have that zero tolerance approach so by all means bring the records but i really think you're throwing yourself on the mercy of the hearing panel thanks for that michelle mark again has got another question he's got a couple of votes as well um that is a tricky one for you here we go um what is imf going to do about naming and shaming of companies that are not open and honest about their products well, we're going to promote Supplement 411 because that is really the best resource. Um, so do look at that website. You can sign up um, and so you can actually have your own login for it. And that means that you can keep up to date. Check if you're going to use a supplement, you really feel you have to use it. There's no way that you, you can actually alter your diet. Um, and you've checked the with our partners in UFC and their nutrition center that, that you've checked their um, uh, all their resources and you really still think that that's what you need to do, then check supplement 411. 
and keep the record of that. But really, there is no need for you to spend any money on a supplement to be a high performance athlete. Your diet could very well be adequate. And we will be giving a lot more information about that. So um, yeah, I think that's uh, probably the best way. It's better not IMAF does it on its own, uh, because we want something that if you're in a gym with other sports, they may not have access to the same information. Okay, next question comes in from Vikram. And Vikram's asking, um, what do you suggest uh, in regards to taking whey proteins or creatine use? Yeah, whey proteins, creatine, um, you know, do look at the evidence. For the most part, uh, the evidence, and I don't mean the evidence that the company itself uh, produces because there could very well be a degree of bias in that and I think we're all learning um, that we really do need to be very very cautious about who's actually producing what they call evidence um, so do look at more independent evidence and again we'll put up uh, links for that but um, if you want to do some of your own research uh, I would really recommend the Australian Institute of Sport have some excellent uh, nutrition guidance as well as UFC and um, you know creatine is naturally occurring as if you're not a vegetarian certainly it's a it's present in meat but do be careful about creatine use because it can cause some side effects that actually would negatively impact your performance and whey proteins there's an awful lot that you can be taking on and just creating more and more uh, of your um, uh, sort of useless um, proteins you want the good proteins rather than you know sort of and why aren't you just drinking milk if you're not lactose intolerant so you know there's there's lots of options please do your research rather than reach for a supplement it'll save you some money as well thanks for that michelle um we've got a question from ed um hi ed hope you're doing long time no sir i just put this one up for you Ed's asking, um, is WADA Adele training required for all continental and world athletes and HP coaches uh, in regards to being similar to other international federations? Well, Ed, yes, that's the program we are uh, about to start off. We're going to start gently um, because uh, the new Adele website um, obviously will take some getting used to. I know that a lot of people did... Um, uh, follow our guidance last year and and actually logged on to the previous Adele website and and, and followed some of those courses um, and that was really helpful. I think um, the new Adele website, we're going to see if we can make uh, the links to you simpler and yes, we will be encouraging and then making mandatory uh, your use of that um, website and as we see them using that in an updated way because that's important uh, you know if you've done the course once um, it, it, you won't really perhaps want to go back and do it again so we want to look and see how they use the refreshment of that education it's like going to school you don't want to keep doing year one each year you want it to progress on so we want to make sure that uh, at the Adele website will also help to meet your needs otherwise we're gonna have to help our coaches and uh, and, and all our support teams get uh, you know refreshed information out to you but do please uh, register for the Adele website put IMAF down as your federation and your sport is MMA, and we will actually then uh, be able to see you and your progress. And that's where we're gonna pull down the reports. So we will uh, encourage first of all, and then of course, we're gonna start to make it mandatory. And what you don't want is to be arriving at a championships and be sent over to the naughty corner to do your Adele course uh, before you actually can register. So avoid that at all costs. Alistair's probably going to be really upset with me for creating a naughty corner at registration. Thank you. Yeah, as long as I'm a member of the naughty corner, we're okay. Um, <laughs> right, Michelle, yeah, they're all the questions so far that have been posed by the attendees. So, um, if you do have any further questions, uh, everybody, just please um, put them in now. I'll just give you a minute or 
to to type if you want to ask any questions. If we don't get any further questions, Michelle, um, it'll be a good time for you to do a, a summary wrap up before you, before we move on to the uh, the next seminar coming up at the top of the hour. Um, okay. And right on cue, Vikram has a question, so I'm going to put this one up. Um, as vegetarians uh, suffers to get all amino acids in their diet. Um, so they move looking towards moving towards supplement use. So can that also be avoided? And what about multivitamin tablet use? Okay. Yeah, a, a very good question. Thank you for that, Vikram, because what I'd like to do, and if I, now I've got a, a moment to get into some of the detail, is that we can make that sort of slight division between vitamins and minerals and supplements. Because if you go for a, a, a good quality multivitamin product there's no reason that it should you know it, it, it you know it should be contaminated because for the most part you're using companies that are pharmaceutical companies as well so do look for the good quality uh, multivitamins and minerals if you're going to use them and many of them have undertaken to get their products tested and that again lessens the risk so I think that's the kind of strategy that I would recommend that you are um, making sure you follow due diligence. You're looking at a, 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 a certified um, a, a vitamin product. And if you cannot take it in your diet, then by all means, uh, you've got something there for you. So, you know, we've got a moment to, to just look at the nutrition side of it. There are testing systems they're not foolproof, but they are out there. And um, it's worth you thinking if you really do need to use a supplement that a, a tested alternative um, is, is a way of making sure that you've reduced the risk. You haven't removed the risk. What happens in a, in a situation where you might test positive, you bring all that evidence and obviously we are then in a situation where we might be pursuing a further investigation with you about that company and whether it's actually um, in itself being compromised by the testing system. But bear in mind the sensitivity of the anti-doping test does mean to say that they can see very, very, very low concentrations, which might be beyond the testing systems adopted by these certifying uh, companies. Oh, sorry, Michelle, I was just having a coughing fit. That's um, all right. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, somebody uh, is typing, so I don't know if that means... Yeah, there's nobody oh. typing in the questions chat. Tab. Okay. Um, that's just the chat box. So, um, final chance, I think, everybody, if you do want a specific question around, you know, what the doping risks are uh, and, you know, anti-doping solutions, then please pose that to Michelle while you've got the opportunity. I mean, there's 70 plus people in attendee now, so I'm assuming you're finding this uh, webinar really uh, value adding and informative, which I can see in, is reflected in the chat box, to be fair, Michelle, you, yeah. uh, everyone's commenting um, about the, the excellent content within this uh, webinar. Um, OK, we've got no more questions coming in then, so uh, I'll leave it for you, Michelle, to uh, if you want to add anything else or um, just do a summary wrap up. Uh, okay. I'll leave it to you. Right. Well, um, just for everyone, thank you so much for attending. The important thing about uh, anti-doping is there are so many positive ways that we really do not have, you know, we can reduce the conversation about anti-doping and we can get on to, you know, the integrity of your performance, the athlete welfare approach, being a quality coach without the need to try and encourage your athletes into the use of uh, prohibited substances. And, and please, you know, if you see that your only solution is to actually use a doping product, I think you've got to ask yourself whether you truly are a real athlete. We've collected all this information for you. It will be in the um, anti-doping handbook that we're just going through the process of updating. Please look out for our new integrity page on the IMAF website where we will be linking a lot of the anti-doping things to very positive programs. And if you are one of the anti-doping officers coming forward from a national federation, please 
do use this information to help bring the links together. You don't have to do the education of people. You don't have to know that prohibited list off by heart. What you need to be able to do is just get people best informed, get the, the timetable out there to keep updating them. And uh, really hope to see you all in person sometime soon. And uh, really, you know, stay safe um, and please stay you know, keeping your involvement in, in MMA sort of doping free. Thank you.